What if I were to suggest that you play a key role in the awakening world? And that you are watching this because you have heard the call. We can start right now by opening our hearts and minds. Welcome to the awakening world. Happy New Year, everybody, and happy Sacred Sunday. It's a new day, it's a new year, and we are here with the Awakening World um, and our Sunday edition. And I want to welcome all of you. I want to welcome those of you who are in our Zoom room. I see already a lot of our uh, friends, a lot of our regulars, and people all the way down in Ecuador. Hello, Darina, and up in British Columbia, all over the United States. Um, it's uh, always beautiful that we've got truly a global peace tribe coming together. I also want to welcome those of you who are watching on our different broadcast partner shows, um, including our newest broadcast partner, the Conscious Awakening Network. Welcome. Um, also, those of you watching on YouTube, a big thank you to Alan Steinfeld. A lot of people watch us on his YouTube channel. And of course, John and Summer Raymer, who are going to drop in later today. Um, a big thanks to them. And through the Sign Network, that's S-I-N-E, uh, we get out to over 100 Facebook groups and pages. Now, if you're watching us on one of those other forums, that's fabulous. And come on into our Zoom room. That way you can directly interact. You can see the conversations going on. That's where we put all the links to the various things that we're talking about today. And really what we're doing is inviting you to join the Global Peace Tribe. It's really, really easy. Just go to globalpeacetribe.com, globalpeacetribe.com, and you're gonna learn all about what we do. When you get to globalpeacetribe.com, click join the new season. And as you join the new season, what will happen is that will give you a chance to register. It takes, us, takes you to the registration page. We do three or four shows every week. In fact, this year we're starting with uh, shows on Wednesday nights. So this is what we did this weekend. On Friday night, we had a wonderful show. Once a month, we honor unsung heroes, and we throw a future hero in there to make it fun. Last time we did two shows, uh, both for New Year's Eve, kind of back to back. And that was a lot of fun. Amazing music last night. And there's what you're going to see today. Um, visioning our new year with our special co-host, Antoinette Hall, who I'm gonna introduce in just a moment. And we have several other guests with us as well. So join the Global Peace Trip. Uh, we do a lot of special events. Uh, for example, we're doing a special event on Friday night uh, in honor of celebrating um, uh, really America's freedom. Um, and it's kind of a January 6th event, uh, really all about bringing people together as opposed to creating division. So there's a lot going on and we now start doing retreats. We had our first Global Peace Tribe retreat in October. We're planning another one in late March or early April. So come join the tribe. All right, let me tell you who we've got today. First of all, I am so grateful. Uh, she is my co-host and most important, it's her birthday. Happy birthday, Antoinette. 
Um, Antoinette is one of our favorite presenters. People love and adore her. Um, and she's going to lead a really beautiful kind of sharing with us about her life's journey, which is very inspiring. Uh, she's going to share a little bit about the Urantia book today and lead a really beautiful experience. I see Jeffrey Goldberg is excited about the Urantia book. So um, uh, welcome aboard and happy birthday, Antoinette. Thank you so much. And thank you. Welcome, everyone, to the Global Peace Tribe. And happy new year to everybody and happy and happy birthday. So this is a very exciting time. I'm very excited to be here and to be on this show with you today, Scott. And uh, one of the reasons why I really so glad because I feel like I've manifested this show today, you know, uh, when you had asked me because those who actually study with us today on the Urantia book who are in another Zoom right now, uh, they know I actually mentioned it in our last week's study. Um, I had mentioned to Pato actually that I said, I would like to, um, to take our show live, to take our study onto a live platform to kind of openly discuss uh, what prayer meditation means to us, you know, because we kind of do this every Sunday, you know, on when we study life and teachings of Jesus Christ. And on Wednesdays, when we talk about the, um, the other parts of the Urantia book, which is, you know, the, the cosmos, the universe, the sciences, all the spirituality and sciences, all the different things. So I figured if we actually brought together our two groups and what we actually had in common, there was a big makeshift for me personally last year when I got diagnosed with breast cancer last year. And when that happened, I took some time off to try to figure out how I was going to begin my journey on my healing. At that time, I knew automatically that I couldn't go the way that that my father had gone and my friends had gone and, and everything else had gone because um, it did, just didn't work out well for them. So with conventional treatments of that, of what you're always been taught about conventional medicine and conventional treatments, that's the only options that they kind of give you. So I had to kind of just look within, you know, what was really what sounded right or what made sense to me. And when I did that, that's when I discovered, I'm, besides I'm married to Pato Bantan, you know, legalize it. So <laughs> it's like cannabis cures everything. I was like, all right, I'm going to have to do this journey. When I started the journey, it's very, it's still very scary and it's still very frightening to figure out how, how all this is kind of unraveling. But at the time, I just kind of like, you know, I just kind of follow my instincts. I follow my heart. I follow my intuition. And from what I understand, you know, what my understandings of the Urantia book with the mother spirit is like, follow your intuition. And at that time, you had contacted me and invited me to be on your show. And I was like, I don't know, you know, I'm just kind of like laying here in my covers, you know, <laughs> just popping pills, you know, supplements, just doing whatever, whatever I'm supposed to do, because that's what they say you're supposed to do. And when you told me to be on the show and I was just sitting there, just kind of miserable, you know, not feeling well and just kind of wondering about all these things. And I heard all the different guests on your show talk about the rise of the divine feminine. I was like, wait, what? I'm like, that's my thing. That's like, that's my jam that that Pato has been kind of trying to get me on from a long time ago. This is way back in 2012. So when I read Deborah's thing about 2012, I'm like, that's when Pato was telling me about the rise of divine feminine was happening in 2012. There's going to be this huge awakening of stuff. And I didn't really understand what he was talking about, but he said, make that your focus, make that your focus on the Urantia book you know, on the Urantia studies with your spirituality and your studies and make that your thing. I said, okay, but I'm still not really understanding. So all these years, yes, everything. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Um, the whole group is actually watching you live now. Oh, they are? So okay. They're, they're, they're with me watching you live. All right, awesome. All right. Well, I'm gonna be calling on them because this is part of the story. So. Right. And Antoinette, I wanna, I wanna continue to introduce our other people and we'll get into your whole story a little bit later but i want to i want to introduce who else we've got on the show and, and do our opening meditation and then we'll come on back into the amazing story that you're going to share uh, with us so um you know you're speaking of the rise of the divine feminine and uh so we decided to invite for new year's day ava park who uh is the founder the creator of the museum of woman and uh, clearly may 2023 be the year that the, the rise of the divine feminine 
really takes place. And so that's why I wanted to make sure we had Ava with us because she's one of our, uh, also a wonderful, uh, a wonderful woman and a wonderful example of the divine feminine. So Ava is with us today. Good to be with you. Good to be with the Global Peace Tribe, Scott. Oh, thank you so much for, for spending your first day of the year with us, Eva. My um, pleasure. And we also have with us Dr. Ruth Anderson. And again, talk about the rise of the divine feminine. Ruth is the founder of the Enlightened World Network. That's one of our broadcast partners that carry all of our shows. And they do a meditation every day. Um, and we learn all about the Enlightened World Network and all the good things that they do. So um, these are our scheduled guests, but we also have a very special uh, friend who just dropped in. Chief Phil Lane is with us. Hello, Chief. Good morning. Good morning. Happy 23. I mean, 2023. Happy 2023. And I'd like to sing a sacred, very one of our most sacred songs, an honor song, if I might. Very brief. Absolutely. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Antoinette. Happy birthday to you. And many, 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 many more. Well, since we're in the birthday moment, I think there's another special friend who just dropped in. Here's Summer Joy Raymer. Hi, happy birthday, Antoinette. Hi, Scott. Hey. So happy new, year. happy new Year. What an amazing way to start the new year with your birthday, Antoinette. Thank you. So cool. uh, so cool. And uh, Happy New Year to Bye. you and to Phil. You know, it's it's really beautiful to start the start the new year with all these wonderful souls that people love. Um, and so uh, and I see more and more people coming in. I also know one of our um, uh, kind of regulars, uh, Sylvia has a very special birthday something for you. So Sylvia, I just put the camera on you. So since we're doing the birthday thing, um, uh, I know you've got something special for Antoinette. So go ahead and you need to unmute. Yes, I think I just did, right? Okay, so um, Antoinette, I think you've seen the origami that no, I delayed, and I don't think it's on. Um, it... People need to mute. Uh, people need to mute, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think you've seen the origami that I share. So um, this particular one is celebrating you and the birth of this new year. Um, and I wanted to thank you for your inspirational courage and grace. Um, and I'm really celebrating that you're on the planet this year. So um, this is an offering to um, all of us. And there's um, <laughs> this one. Yeah. Also, so thank you, and may this year be one of wellness for all of us and the planet in particular. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Sylvia. Thank you for doing that. And Chief Phil, if you can turn your camera back on, usually I start off with a meditation, but if you're here with us, I would love for you to lead our opening New Year Day prayer and meditation. Will you be willing to do that, sir? Uh, you muted. On this beautiful birthday day of my sister, I'd just be so honored on this 2023, our best year ever, we pray. Yes. Creator of the universe, most beloved one, all powerful one, most kind one, most compassionate one, ever forgiving one, O ancient of days, we call upon your holy power at this day. Especially to bless our beloved sister Antoinette and to free her from anything, anything that will keep her from living to be an old, old, old grandmother with gray, gray hair, along with her beloved husband beside her, continuing to bring us beautiful music. In the Kashiwakantara, we call upon all the tribes of the nation the East. They might up, stand up today. Arise as prophesied 
in this new year, 2023. We'll move forward towards ending war, beginning peace on earth by 2030. And all the tribes and nations of the South where it comes to life, we call upon them and all their relatives to come together in, in unity and harmony and love. And to the West, from where comes thunder, lightning, and rain, we call upon that spiritual power of thunder and lightning and rain to awaken our human family to the reality that each one of us is a sovereignty, ancient and perishable, everlasting. And we humble ourselves before all the tribes and nations of the North, from where comes the white snow, that they might come together in unity and harmony, might recognize we're all members of one human family, that we're all indigenous people of this day, Mother Earth, that we're one, and to have peace on earth by 2030. And we call upon the powers of Father Sky, all the masculine dimension of life to come together in life, the unity and harmony. And we give respect to all those spiritual qualities. And, the, and now, most of all, in this day, this year, which we're going to see women, just like in, just like in Brazil, taking leadership, where we have an indigenous woman for the first time in history, now is taking charge of working with the tribes in the Amazon, with all the people to bring the Amazon back. We just give thanksgiving that way. And also the 22 prayers of the sacred women of Mother Earth will continue on. And we just give thanksgiving, creator of these things. And we just ask ourselves that we might truly, truly become happy and joyful beings and never find such a great year as 2023. And now I'll conclude for this prayer for our human family. Oh my God, oh my God, unite the hearts of thy servants and reveal unto them thy great purpose. May they follow in thy commandments and abide in thy law. Help them, O God, in their endeavor and grant them the strength to serve thee. O God, lead them not to themselves, but guide their steps to the light of knowledge and share their hearts with thy love. Verily, thou art their helper and their Lord. Uh, oh, thank you so much, Brother Phil. And let's stay for a moment because I'm going to ask you um, and some of your other friends a wonderful question in a moment. But we have Omashar with us, and we always love to start our Sundays, although we're already off to a rousing start with Omashar music. So uh, we'll be back to Chief Phil and Antoinette and Ava and Ruth in a moment. But here is our beloved brother, Omashar. Our 
boundaries dissolve And free to love again Right from the heart of one We are rising There's no disguising The truth of who we are With our hearts connected again Now we are the star And now that we are home And all is said and done Light can find its way Through all the true ones And broken hearts resolve Into the song of life And the song of life be heard by all We are rising There's no disguising The truth of who we are With our hearts connected again Now we are the <laughs> beautiful i'm going to go to gallery review let's all give a twinkle oh, wow. that beautiful song by omashar twinkle to twinkle toes happy new year everybody aloha namaste here we are we made it and we're uh, brighter than ever you know we've got so many amazing people here right now um and so i'm, I'm going to pop the spotlight on a few of our friends that have joined us and i see kwajo is here with us um Hey, Quasho, welcome. Hey, Scott. <laughs> it's good to see you, Scott, and the whole family. Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, are Happy you in Ghana? Ghana? West Africa, that's right. Oh, my gosh. Hey, and do you know that it is your soul sister's birthday today? It is Antoinette's birthday. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we are celebrating with her. <laughs> uh, uh, Quasho, what do you have to say about Antoinette? Since it's her birthday and you know her, you've worked with her, how would you describe Antoinette uh, to, to, to our audience? I mean, Antoinette, Antoinette is a lovely soul. I mean, Antoinette is, is more like a, a social butterfly. You know, everywhere she goes, I, I mean, the, the, the vibe is so outgoing. She makes a lot of friends within the shortest pos pos possible time. You know, once she's out there, she attracts, she, she, she attracts people i don't know if, if you can hear me let me turn my we can hear you <laughs> if, 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 if you can hear me that's right uh -huh. so she 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 is more like you know the best words to describe antoinette is that she's a social butterfly i mean she believes so much in the oneness and everywhere she goes she makes friends just like that you know she just spreads the vibe of good cheer of love of truth of beauty of goodness and when she's in collaboration with with Pato is a rap. I mean, it's, it's, it's just it's just a rap. You know, they they just go out there, they do their thing. So yes, she's an embodiment of love. She's an embodiment of 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 friendship. You know, fr friendship. I mean, I mean, it is. I mean, those who know Antoinette know she's a very good friend. You know, like she 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 she's always there for you. Once 
you have that thing like, like I would say she covers for, for you all the time. And she's a lovely person. She's a lovely person. She's a truth seeker. She loves truth. She loves beauty. She loves goodness. And so she's always reaching out for these things, you know, and it is making her day by day a better human being, you know. So, I mean, over the the, the period of like 10 years that I've got to know Ant Antoinette, she's deepened her personality so much. You know, she has come to know a lot of things regarding the spiritual, regarding the mental or psychological and then or intellectual and then regarding like her physicality. She, she's been through a lot of changes, you know, which, 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 you know, makes it very uh, 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 refreshing to always have her as a friend. So yes, yeah. Antoinette is just beautiful. <laughs> Well, that's that's uh, a beautiful yeah. testimonial. Yeah. And of course, you two um, have been working together on this documentary. I'm going to bring two of your other friends on. Uh, John Raymer and Summer Raymer are here. Um, and so since we're kind of in the celebrating your birthday part of the show, uh, John and Summer, welcome. Um, and what do you have to say to or about Antoinette? You want to start, John? Well, I just wanted to build on what Quadjo was saying. I added in the chat here. Yes, she floats like a butterfly, but I've been on the other side. She can sting like a bee. <laughs> That's love too, by the way. That's love too, the sting. That's right. We got that Brooklyn connection and that standing up yes. for justice. I That's mean, true. She is fierce with love and compassion and genius. Her music, uh, and what her and Pato have gifted to all of us is such a blessing. Thank you, Scott, for making this possible for us to celebrate her. Absolutely. And I think Pato might be joining us at some point. If he turns his camera on, I'll drop him on. You know, um, while I've got John and Summer here, um, you know, every show I always uh, acknowledge you in the sign network. Um, and getting us out to well over 100 Facebook groups and pages that are watching us right now. Um, so thank you both so much for all that you do with the Sign Network. And I know that one of your friends is with us. Uh, Ruth Anderson is here. Um, and so this is actually a moment where I'd love for Ruth to talk a little bit about the Enlightened World Network um, and for the two of you to talk about the Sign Network and how people who are watching can collaborate on, on these two amazing organizations that are helping us really to bring this global peace tribe together. Um, so welcome, first of all, Ruth, thank you for being with us. Um, and I know you and Summer and John have a, have a, a long friendship as well, yeah? Yeah, I mean, we go way back. You and Summer and John have a, have a, a long friendship as well, yeah? Yep. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> we, got, we got a little double, a, a little double version there. Um, so tell us a little bit. Um, I'll give each of you a chance to share a little bit about your experience of the other. I'd love to hear Summer, John, talking about the World Network, and Ruth, your experience of John, Summer, and the Sign Network. Well, I'd love to start. I just want to first off say this background image is inspired by my sister Antoinette, that she is unstoppable love in the universe. Nothing will stop her. And how I met her, I felt like this is what you were doing when we met you in Ethiopia, is you were coming into places and you were illuminating life through your music, through your presence through just seeing you. This is what I saw. That's what I still see many years later. I love you so much. I just Thank want to you. start off saying that. And, and we should you. just I love you guys so much. <laughs> all the work you two did together on bridging the divide. Mm -hmm. I mean, real work, like getting into the real deep mm -hmm. conversations that- We're maybe... not done yet. <laughs> and we're not done yet, that's right, that's right. We have so much more work to do. We're not done yet, we're just getting started. We're just in. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to start there because I know we're here honoring Antoinette and she's co-hosting and and yeah, you know, Ruth is one of she's like part of the pioneers that as the sign network was really just like getting started. I remember one of my first conversations with Ruth and I still see it happening through in what she's doing and the way that she shows up in Enlightened World Network. I remember her telling me this vision of angels rising all over the world. 
And it's always been like the thing that stands out to me about the Enlightened World Network. You know, it's like so many people have so many great ways that we can come together. And what distinguishes Enlightened World Network in my heart, and just as I still feel you, Ruth, is this angelic frequency that the network attracts people that are really um, illuminating like the angelic field in the world and how you are cultivating a space for people to, to guide meditations, to have their voices be heard as angelic frequencies in the world through what you're doing over the years. I'm not as connected to it at this particular moment, but I still know it and I can feel it. When Ruth enters the space, there is something that's just so angel, and it's just, it's pure and it's clear. And I think it's always there in, in, in what is unfolding with your network. I've been a part of um, collaboration books with Ruth and she does it in a way that makes it seem so easy. Like I'm actually working on a book and have been for three years. And I swear when Ruth like does it, there's like a magic wand. And suddenly a couple months later, a book is done with all these incredible, you know, voices that have come together. And um, I admire you. I love you. And just, I always know we're in this together, but I still think of that like angels rising all over the world. And that's Enlightened World Network. Well, Summer, that's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I don't even remember how we met Summer, but Summer has been with us here at Enlightened World Network for three, four years, I'm thinking. And Summer to me is, she is just nature. And she's just, I, I just see you on Whidbey Island in my mind's eye, skipping on the beach, you know, just having it be your home. Summer and John to me are connectors and just they have introduced me to amazing people and just seeing your spread across the world and the connections that you've put together to support humanity in so many different phases it's just it's beautiful and i'm so pleased to be connected with you all mm. yeah thank you Absolutely. so tell us about the enlightened network so Enlightened World Network is, um, it's, it was a, a brainchild of Archangel Michael, and he had asked me to create a network, and a network being a place for folks that are high vibrational, that walk with spirit, to come on and be able to have a show, to find other folks, to find a safe community, truly a safe community for their own spiritual growth and transformation. And I am out there almost daily, just putting my own personal growth and transformation out there for other people to see, knowing it's safe, knowing it's okay. And that that's one of the fun things I enjoyed with Summer was watching her grow from connecting with me and the archangels, because I think Summer, you had said that you hadn't really experienced angelic energy until we had connected in that way. And so that just felt like such a blessing to be able to watch that unravel for you. Hmm, thank you. Yeah, no, I definitely think there's a, a as um, Antoinette's asking about the Enlightened World Network, I would say it's a catalyst for inviting angel frequency and, and specifically Archangel Michael, I think is a, is a dear beloved to both of us at this point, I would say is a dear protector friend. And um, yeah, I, and I do, I think it, it's, it, that is part of what the enlightened world network is and how you hold the space with all the other amazing beings that, that are attracted and you're very collaborative and um, a catalyst for the angelic frequency to work with us, you know? It's like, there's like the human realm and then there's this other realm that's the great mystery, right? That so many of us are talk about in different ways and, and maybe some people don't feel it, but I would say the Enlightened World Network invokes that as a collaborative um, field and 
an empowerment of um, those that really are recognizing that that's a significant part of this time. Thank you, Summer. That's beautiful. You know, one thing I want to really stress, though, is yes, there's the angelic realm. Yeah. They are all such a piece of us. That divine energy that is of the angels is the same divine energy that's in every single one of us. Mm -hmm. And that's that's really where Enlightened World is sitting is helping folks to see the divine light in themselves and in their brothers and sisters so we can really see ourselves as that one that spark of the divine so thank you that is beautifully stated um uh there's so many wonderful people with us right now today um it's it's kind of a an abundance and may that be kind of representative of what 2023 is going to be all about. Um, so uh, again, I put into the chat box a little bit about Enlightened World Network. You can also find it on Facebook. Um, and again, it's the Enlightened World Network. They carry our shows. Tell us, Ruth, a little bit about the daily meditation that you do. Right. So um, Archangel Michael had asked for us to provide a safe space on a daily basis for folks to come from wherever they are to just come and sit with spirit, with themselves, opening to the divine on a daily basis. We provide it live on YouTube at Enlightened World Network and on Facebook at Enlightened World Network. And every day there's someone coming on and leading a guided meditation. And um, I'm fortunate enough to be doing that twice a week. On Sundays, we do a silent meditation where we ask you to meditate along with us. And then my co-host, Terry Angel, and I come back on with you. And we share the messages that we heard in spirit during that meditation. And then on Wednesdays, Terry and I do it together. It's called Meditation Excavation. We meditate along with you. And we're sharing with you live what spirit is showing us at that very moment. So those two days a week are very special to me. The other days of the week are hosted by um, EWN hosts from across the globe. And so proud of the people that are coming to do the uh, meditations. They're all stepping into their ministries in their own way. And so proud of them all. Beautiful. Um, well, again, I'm going <clears> to <throat> real quickly take people to your Facebook page, um, and <clears throat> that's where you can learn much more about the Enlightened World Network. Just go to Facebook, put in Enlightened World Network, um, and there's a little bit about today's events, and there's what we're doing right now, <laughs> our Awakening World Show, and it's really wonderful to have you with us, Ruth. Um, thank you so much for the wonderful work that you're doing. Thank you. You know, speaking of ministries, I'm going to come back to John and Summer for a moment, because really, you two are doing a beautiful ministry through the Sign Network, and I'm so grateful for how you get us out to over 100 Facebook groups and pages, and it's really helped us to expand our Global Peace Tribe re reach. Um, so before we get back to Antoinette and Ava, I just wanted to acknowledge the two of you, and ask you to give people a, a minute of what the sign network is all about and how people can be involved. Right. right. Well, you know, Scott, you uh, demonstrate exactly what this network's all about because here's the truth about the sign network. It is us. The only way that we could share this on all these pages is because of the trust that's been placed in us. For me, this is what an enlightened world looks like. We are healing, we're evolving, and trust is at the heart of it all. So just to be clear to everyone, Summer and I are just facilitating that impulse that so many of us have said, let's work together in unprecedented unified action, as Brother Phil will say again and again. So what's going on here is that, in fact, that's what somebody look, if I was distracted, because we are sharing on all these pages right now. <laughs> And that's only because you've given us the trust to do that. And that's the joy for me of this moment, because these are challenging times. But if we can change the way we relate to each other, we can change these patterns and the situation's gonna change. 
That's what I'm betting on. I'm betting on us, and Summer and I are so blessed to be able to do this, to have the trust of so many people, and to be able to harness that for good, to bring light to those things that we need to see right now. And I just want to say, you know, it's a, I totally agree that Scott is <clears throat> an example of a sine wave just by how he shows up in spaces and how interwoven and he, he shines light like an angel, um, is an angel in my opinion as well, shines light so many different directions. Somehow he's like this prism of a being. And I don't know how he does all that he does similar to so many people that I know in this room. I don't know how Antoinette does everything that she does and looks so calm and, you know, uh, just so well through it. I don't know how Pato does it, but it's like, I think what, what is so cool and revealing in the sign network, if I could just open a door, it would be all of these people that are saying yes to working together. And, you know, Antoinette and Pato, they're- oh that are saying yes to yes. working together. Yes. And you know, Anton and Pato there that are saying yes. To I, yes. Think, I think it's echoing with Pato, which is which is awesome. I'm so glad Pato is here. And but yeah, that it is revealing that an a way to work together. You know, we can talk all day about how we want to be more interdependent and let's do things together and we are one. And this is an opportunity and there are sine waves the convergence event another example here we are with Antoinette and Pato they're a part of that convergence that starts around Dr Martin Luther King's um birthday and day of service there's a whole global event and honoring service projects that are um the space itself these convergences happen on a seasonal basis and they're multi-Zoom spaces that are like tsunamis of ways to work together. Um, and we do kind of different focuses, but beloved community and the, the honor of Dr. Martin Luther King is what we're preparing for with Pato and Antoinette and Scott and so many of you. I mean, so everything's an invitation to, to synergy, for synergy with the Sci Network. Now, this is a breakthrough year happening. Pato, Antoinette, you don't know this, but... During Enlightening Our Way Together, we had a session. Antoinette, I know you were trying to get on during it, talking about the upcoming MLK convergence that we're doing on Beloved Community. And we had a woman from AmeriCorps. And the Compassion Games has been so blessed to have resources to support projects like Stand Up for Justice around Dr. King. And we played her that song, Pato, that you and Antoinette did about Dr. King. It brought her to tears. It's our time, guys. I asked Ben yesterday, Summer said to me, what's your word for the year? She does this every year. Hers is uh, cosmic joy light year. Yeah, it's more than one word. But <laughs> Ben's, Ben's word is breakthrough. <laughs> I'm catalyst. Here just igniting the spirit and taking all the good that we've done for so long independently and together and saying this is our time so it's true we've got this upcoming convergence from january 13th through the 16th pato and antoinette are going to host dr king's online birthday celebration on the 15th as well as the work that they're going to be doing a concert they're going to be doing on the 16th which is a day of service it's a day on not a day off but we are so fortunate to have each other especially when we can give people the kind of hope and we can demonstrate what a beloved community looks like and be that way with each other, be transparent with each other, be open to each other, and in doing so, lift all of us up together, all of us. There is nobody to be excluded from this. This is a time for us to unite in unprecedented. Oh my God, look who's here. <laughs> hey, Quad Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, one, of, one, of, one of the things too, I, I really do want to say this because when you did have Ruth uh, from the Enlightened Network and the, and the Sign Network, part of the whole thing with this manifestation and prayer and me uh, meditation, which is leading and why, why I wanted to start off today in a purposeful, meaningful way is because, you know, when we're like in the Urantia book, we talk about these broadcast circuits and stuff. 
you know, so in, before we get into celestial broadcast circuits, right now what we do have is broadcast circuits on this planet, which is the sign network. And now we're now learning about the enlightened way. But what what's happening is that the people of like mind and shared visions of how we are meeting up in this cosmic mind or quantum field or all these different terminologies that people have been using and talking about for a long time, but they've been doing it alone, you know, individually uh, with each other or, you know, individual. But now we actually have the opportunity where all of these people can come together through these organizations. And that's why I'm kind of glad that we're actually here together today because it's like, look what they're doing. Look what they're doing. Here's how you can actually get involved. Here's how, if you're the kind of person who believes in prayer and meditation or believes in changing the world or manifesting your destiny or all the different things that you feel like you can contribute and you're not actually alone out there. There's so many other people like within this tribe of a community that actually believes the same as you do and we actually can connect. So there are these ongoing events that we're doing throughout the year, but people don't actually know about them. But this is where individuals like us who are coming together, we're manifesting and creating these things together. You know, so if we're not finding the service ways, we're actually like um, the way that I work my own prayer meditation. It's just that I'm just thinking about, you know, what is it that of God's will? This is what we've always learned, you know, when we study the Urantia book. What am I looking to seek from God's will and what is God trying to tell me? And then I just listen and wait for what that is. And then when I hear that, then I start to get motivated and move to sit there and start planning out what do I want to do? And so that's how I planned out what I want to talk about today. That's how I planned out what I want to do for MLK. That's when I was on the weekend um, with Ben last night while you guys were doing the whole New Year's Eve thing. And we was working on the stuff for the LA Convergence, you know, and discussing us like how is the whole world? The world is changing right now as we speak. I am not an authority on celestial communication. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing, <laughs> you uh -huh. know, and what I'm observing and what I'm all observing all around me and these synchronicities. This is not just coincidences. This is really planned des destiny that people are manifesting and creating these experiences. It's real and it's happening and we can actually see it and feel it and touch it. Beautiful. Um, yes, um, and I think this would be a good moment. I'm going to bring Pato on for a moment because we haven't had a chance to hear from Pato. Um, and so, Pato, I've got you on camera here. Um, and I'd love for you to share anything you want to share in a birthday way for your wife. Um, but then I'd love for both of you to uh, introduce our audience to the Urantia book, to kind of the work that you're doing. Um, and um, so welcome, Pato. Happy New Year, brother. Happy New Year, my brother. So good <laughs> to see you. Good to see and you. Too. Happy New Year to all of our family that are joining us here from all over the world. Um, just want to send much love and much respect to everyone for all the amazing work that you're doing and for the intention. Because it really doesn't matter how, how big or how small we are in the scheme of things. The main thing is our intention. If our intention is to make the, better, the world a better place, then our drop in this ocean of global peace and love is gonna make a contribution immediately, you know? Um, so um, I just wanna start by saying, you know, Antoinette's um, thing right now is to really delve into prayer and meditation. And um, one of the things that the Arantia book says is that prayer and meditation um, are important for spiritual growth, but also equally important is service, doing something for your brothers and sisters. And um, the, 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 last, the second to last paragraph of the entire Arantia book it says the great challenge to modern man and woman is to achieve better communication with the divine spirit that indwells the mortal mind. That's the quote I was looking for. That was the quote <laughs> I was looking for. I was like, what's the quote? There's like a thousand quotes in there, but there was one about the better communication. That's the one I yes. was looking for. Please say yes. it again, please. <laughs> um, 
the, the, the great challenge to modern man and, and woman is to achieve better communication with the indwelling spirit that resides within the mortal mind. So um, that is the challenge for us, you know? And um, one of the things I wanted to say is that, you know, I, I, I've seen a lot of meditation videos out there and a lot of times, you know, I can understand motivational videos where the person presenting the video is playing some beautiful music and speaking to you and telling you how beautiful you are and you're motivated and you're gonna exercise, you're gonna eat better, you're gonna heal yourself and all of these wonderful things. And, and I think those are good for motivating the individual. But as far as meditation and stillness, I think there shouldn't be any talking. I think it should just be the music and allow the individual to drift within their mind and allow the spirit within them to talk to them. The Urantia book also says that a great practice to achieve spirit communication is to talk to yourself as though you're like when you was a child, you had an invisible friend. And the Urantia book encourages us to do that as adults, that at first it might seem not so you know valid or important but the more you practice talking to yourself and your your secret um friend your inner voice your inner friend the more you practice it is the more and more it becomes real until you are actually experiencing divine celestial communication which just comes through you naturally because some people are expecting to hear a big voice saying, hello, I am here. But you're going to hear God in your own voice because you are a reflection of God right here to the world. So when you look in the mirror, you're seeing a representation of God in yourself. The Urantia book also says you must find God in yourself, not for yourself, in yourself, and of yourself. So, you know, many men, the Iran also says, many men die searching for the God that lives within them. So we don't have to go any further than the kingdom of heaven that is within our mind. You know, and, and in taking the time to be still, calm, slow down our you know, biological mechanism, our neural centers, you know, by getting to that place of stillness, like the scripture says, be still and know that I am. You know, by getting to that point, we find God inside of ourselves. And our desire to be of service, then we allow God to work through us into the world with our brothers and sisters as we open ourselves to become the beacon of light that we all are in our own individual and very unique way that's my story and i'm sticking to it <laughs> that's, good. <laughs> that's very good and I, I i do love what you're saying there pato because um that's uh, so so this is great because like i was talking about with the sign network and and the light network because pato and i had just decided while i was diving deep into this meditation and prayer stuff that that was something that we wanted to start offering, you know, um, um, across the airwaves as well too, because I noticed as I was digging and I found, I came across all these ta uh, YouTubes and videos and different things. That's kind of why he brought that up because he's, I've subjected him to every, to thousands of manifestation <laughs> videos <laughs> from everything from, from <laughs> Joe Dispenza to Jessica to, to McMurray, to Abraham Hicks, to Louisa Hay, to, you know, every, everything from the power of your subconscious mind. And this was from last year's show, from um, last year's show, when I was starting to follow my leadings, I said, all right, I'm going to listen to my leadings. I'm going to follow the prayer and meditations. And through the leadings, I came across all these videos where people were self-healing. I said, well, how are these people self-healing? I've been Pato's been trying to get me to pray and meditate for decades. I mean, well, 
I say decades, but we've only been together like 10 years or more. But I've had an issue, I've had a problem with prayer meditation from a, many years ago when I was trying to connect with my dead father. I had lost him when I was a child and I was watching the, that guy who used to communicate with, um, with uh, he used to have a show on, on TV every week, but um, he used to communicate with dead people on the, on the other side. And so I figured if I prayed enough and I meditated enough, I could sit there and connect with my dead father, you know? So I didn't understand how to do this. So a friend of mine, he told me about these spirit guides and he was Catholic, but he was telling me about these Indian spirit guides that, and if you go into prayer and meditation, so I decided, let me try that. And I went into this deep prayer meditation years ago, trying to connect with my dead father. And then instead I saw these, you know, I went deep and saw these lights kind of like shooting at me. And when I saw those lights shooting at me and I got into this deep meditation, it freaked me out. And I was like, all right, I thought I want to communicate with something on the other side, but it freaked me out. And I was like, oh, hell no, I don't want to communicate with anything on the other side. And ever since then, I could never really like be in a, a right type of prayer or meditation. I've always continued doing music and people always said that they felt things from the music, but I wasn't like, I think that was kind of like my meditation. As I started to, um, some years later, while we were touring, I fell into a deep meditation by accident, total accident. I was listening to some meditation piece or something that I like to sleep. And um, I started hearing some bells or gongs or something else like that. And I went into a dream that took me into another dream that took me into another dream. And I saw Pato, I saw gold, I saw the Urantia circles and gold or whatever. And I felt this overwhelming feeling of love. And it was like, and I could see words and I could see things. And this feeling was so incredible and it was so fantastic. I was like, how do I get back in there? I felt like I was gone away for years or something. And I learned all these mysteries and, and covered all these different things. And I was like, what was that? And I was asking Pato about it. And I was like, where's that song? I was like, that song took me into a deep meditation. And I found the song and the song was only a few minutes, <laughs> maybe seven or 10 or 11 minutes. I'm like, I could have sworn I was gone for years, you know, in this one song. And I said, what was it that triggered that, that took me there? And ever since then, I have not been able to get back there again either. But since I've been on this search, I said, what is it that, that is taking people that they're being able to heal themselves from stage four cancer, from all kinds of, um, you know, all kinds of deadly diseases and, and all, you know, it's like, how are people like, it's just magically overcoming a deadly disease from just the power of their mind and just reading and studying and searching and finding all these things. So I started doing all this searching on like how to take care of myself on the physical level, you know, on the knowing part, but the spiritual part was a part that I was missing and connecting. And even up until last night, I was still experiencing severe depression because that's been going on throughout this whole time from once the doctors have sat there and put this negative thought into my head, you know? And I was like, wow, once you deal with negativity in life and negative thoughts that people give you, you have to spend all of your time trying to get yourself out of that negativity. And so all this horrible feeling that I was feeling with the menopause and the symptoms of menopause and the uncertainty of, of cancer or life and death and other stuff like that, I was like, can my mind, can I actually become a Jedi master and like be okay with everything? And so that's what I'm still working on. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm going to heal myself with my own music, you know? <laughs> so I decided, let me just go and discover this stuff. Started finding the more things about the 432. I discovered that stuff last year and it was weird because I did feel it. And even though Pato was sitting here saying, he doesn't get those things. I'm like, I'm not that Jedi master where I can just close my eyes and just be in Zen moment. You know, I'm like, I'm way too hyper, way too much activity, way too much things going on. And it's so hard just to quiet my mind. It's so hard. I need someone to kind of lead me there or to kind of get me there. Or what was the things that Joe was talking about? or Caroline was talking about, you know, what were these things that all these people were talking about that was getting them into that place? 
you know, so that's been my journey and my discovery and why I wanted to ask other people, you know, like what that means to them about this better communication with their indwelling spirit, or they call some call it first source and center or your thought adjuster or your mystery monitor or your all the different names for the divine, different divine things. But I feel all of these things are coming from the feminine divine. I feel all these things as the, as the, as the mother spirit is awakening and rising. I think she's kind of awakening a lot of people, male and female, and they're starting to recognize what's happening inside of them. And they're trying to look for their own transformations within their own life as well, too. You know, 2023 is going to be different for a lot of people. And even my friend Coco, who's here as well, too, she said, some of us won't make it. She told me this a couple weeks ago. And within those few weeks, a lot of people didn't actually make it to 2023. So what is it that people are connecting to? How are they ending up in this cosmic mind, in this quantum field, into this Naverna? You know, no matter what your belief is, whether you're Buddhist, Catholic, Christian, atheist, you know, there's something that is connecting all of us into something that's very special and unique as children of the universe, children of God. Wow. Uh, that's, let's just take a moment to digest all of that, right? Because that's um, very, very beautiful. I'm going to bring your friends, Sean and Summer, back on for a moment. Um, to get their reflections of, of the beauty of what you just shared. John, Summer, what would you like to add or reflect? Well, there's the indigenous phrase that authenticity grants authority. Mm. Authenticity grants authority. When are we, what are we waiting for? Why not be real now? Thank you for being so vulnerable and open with us all, Antoinette. That's the way to be in this world. That warms my heart. That inspires me to be more mm -hmm. present. I'm learning to be, um, or trying to be more mindful. It shows. You know, that acceptance of the mystery of life. We just saw this everything, everywhere, all at once movie that just blew our minds. <laughs> like in this moment where you realize that maybe nothing matters, then really everything matters. And that mm -hmm. the choices we make really do matter. And we're living that way. <clears throat> the mystery, accepting that we don't know for sure. We don't need to know for sure. We just know we have each other and we have this moment. Thanks for reminding me what it is to be real, mm -hmm. to be vulnerable and to wonder, what is this? <laughs> where are we? What are we up to here? <laughs> You know, ultimately, it is a great mystery. It really is. Um, but it's beautiful to hear everybody's different reflections on our shows, you know, all the different, uh, all the different perspectives. Uh, and ultimately, it's all God life experiencing itself through Antoinette, through Pato, through John, through Summer, through Ava Park, and through each and every one of the people who are with us today. We have a, a, a few people have been asking, what is the Urantia book? So I'm bringing Pato and Antoinette back on for a moment. A, a, a few people have been asking, oh. what is the Urantia book? So I'm bringing Pato and Antoinette back on for a moment. you got to um, feedback. You have feedback. You have to turn off the other speaker while you're, this one's open. There we go. Yeah. So yeah, question for Pato and Antoinette. Uh, please introduce us a little bit to the Urantia book. And then I think, um, Antoinette, you've got something planned, so take it away. All right. All right. Well, I'll let you start, Pato, since you're the one who introduced the Urantia book to me. This was back in um, 2009, and he didn't actually introduce it to me. And I think for, for those of you who are watching, and I have a lot of atheist friends who are in our ministry and who are always curious because I love having this conversation with atheists. So, um, so enjoy. Go ahead, Pato. <laughs> Well, firstly, I want to say the Arantia book is the newest cult on the planet. And anyone that joins has to give me 50% of their income. <laughs> and you have to drink the Kool-Aid that I make. <laughs> no, but seriously. <laughs> um, the Arantia book itself claims to be the fifth epochal revelation 
to human beings on this planet. It says that um, there have been four epochal revelations. There have been many minor revelations on the planet um, and visitations on the planet. But as far as epochal revelations, there have been four before the Urantia book. And the Urantia book claims to be the fifth epochal revelation where celestial beings have come to our planet to upgrade us with truth. They say the first revelation was um, the planetary prince, Caligastia, um, who left many, many um, signs and buildings which um, people are now unearthing. And also the Bible talks about giants being on the planet sleeping with the daughters of men. This were the first celestial beings on our planet. The Urantia book says the second revelation and celestial visitation on our planet was Adam and Eve. And if you remember in the Bible, when Cain kills Abel, he goes, he leaves, he gets kicked out of the garden and goes north and finds a wife in the land of Nod. And the Nadites are also known as some of the Nephilim who were the giants on the planet at the time. So that's the second revelation. The third revelation is found in Hebrews in the Bible, Hebrews chapter seven, and that was a visitation from another celestial being called Melchizedek. And in Hebrews chapter seven, it says, and this Melchizedek, king of Salem, also known as the king of peace, having no mother, no father, no beginning of days, no ending of life, no genealogy, but remaining a priest continually. Um, and the Urantia book reveals that Melchizedek is not one individual, but an order of beings. But one of them came to our planet to help us during the darkest time um, of spiritual darkness on our planet because of the Lucifer rebellion, which was going um, chaotic on our planet. So Melchizedek was the third revelation. The fourth revelation on our planet that the Urantia book reveals is Jesus Christ. And in the Urantia book, the entire life of Jesus is revealed for the first time. There's no other book on the planet that reveals Jesus's life from before he was born to the day of his birth, his entire life after the resurrection, all the people he visited after the resurrection and what happened after he um, transfigured um, and left the planet. Um, and the fifth revelation, I guess after they killed Jesus, the way they killed Jesus, the celestial says, let's send them a book. <laughs> <laughs> and that, they, have, that... they, they have a bad track record of how they treat celestial beings. Let's send them a book. So they sent the Urantia book, which I have been studying now for 30 something years. And I have read many, many books. I did religious studies for 15 years straight. And I am convinced, and this is just me personally, I am convinced that the Urantia book is a gift to mankind from celestial beings, from a, 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 a broad selection of celestial beings, from local invisible beings that live on our planet, from permanent citizens that live on our planet to Ancients of Days, Seraphim, Cherubim, Omniophim, um, the Angel Gabriel, a long list of them. So I just, I just want to wrap up by saying that the Urantia book is not a cult. There is no leader. It's a group of people that find the book and read the book and share the book in the way they live or share the book, the good news. The, the main thing that the Urantia book asks people to share is to go and tell everyone that we're all God's children, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And what the Urantia book promotes more than anything else, because it says that institutional religions are good for those who need it. But the greatest thing that an individual can do 
is develop a personal relationship with the God that lives within them. And that is unique to every individual. There is no specific name for God. God is whatever you want to call God. God is manifested in male and female and both male and female. So we cannot put God in a box. We, we also have a beautiful um, mother spirit that is only now beginning to be revealed to humanity. She is fully revealed in the Urantia book. All of her attributes. She does more than any other being in the universe. The mother spirit. What do they call it? Multitasking? Mm -hmm. The mother spirit is yeah. the epitome of multitask. Uh, is epitome the right word? Yes. <laughs> yeah, epitome of multitasking. And the more we learn about her, the more time we take to communicate with our celestial family. Because once we leave this planet, there's no religions. There is just spiritual life. And we can attain that now. We can live that now where it's not so important about reading a book or what we think we know. What's more important is how we live, how we love, how we share, how we care, and how we allow ourselves to be pure vessels, transparent vessels for spirit to work through us. That's what's important. But the Arantia book has helped me to attain my spiritual liberty because at first, before I found the book, I was worried that I would be a religious orphan, that I would not belong to anything because there was no religion that could keep my attention. There was no religion that could make me feel as though this is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. There was always more, and there was always something that made me say, hold on, this sounds like a man is involved here. So um, I wanted to find pure spirit, and I found it in the Urantia book, and, and it's inspired me not to go out spreading the Urantia book, not to go out trying to convert people to what I believe, but to go out and love people and encourage people to be the best they can be. That's, a, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I want, to, I want to bring on John and Summer and Ava Park and Quajo. You know, we've got so many amazing people that are here right now. Um, and I just want to give them all a chance to give their their perspective about what you just shared, Pato. So here's Quajo, Ava Park, John, Summer. Um, before we headed over to, back to Antoinette for her kind of plan program, I'd just love to give you each a chance to share kind of your thoughts about the universality of what Pato just shared. Well, I'd love to, to say something. Um, uh, I, what I love about just simply listening to another human is to feel the frequency of of the authenticity of what's true for them. Like I, I think that that that's something that I feel so alive here. Um, and I know that's a, a big part of how you hold the space, Scott. And um, Antoinette and the there was a level of vulnerability that I I don't know if I've quite felt but I really felt it as she was speaking. And I just really want to, in that divine feminine, um, uh, the generosity of that and what that offers and makes space for when someone in the space uh, really opens up in some way that maybe um, feels a little bit like being naked or something. But I, I, I just really want you to know Antoinette like I I really felt that and I think that it's it's a it's one of the things that makes it easier to trust to build trust on when we can offer and share from that kind of place within and I feel like that is part of you know how you and Pato over all the years that I've known both of you that there is this um, like a, a place that I, I want to 
lean deeper into and listen about what you and Pato care about at the depth of your spirit. And so I just really feel that here as um, Pato also just shared so deeply of the depth of the urantia and, and how easy it is for us to make things up. Like the sort of humor that I felt about Pato talking about the cult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that that's so up in the collective, especially of like as assuming maybe that we really understand something in some way that is actually like a really dark place or that there's something that people that, you know, in the, in the sense of cults, I just feel like that word is something that's just so up and, and people maybe want to claim that that's a cult and that's a cult, but to, to really, uh, listen for the, the discernment, I just feel it's like, it's easy to listen to both of you because I know it comes from such a deep place in your heart. And I just think, I just want to say thank you for being so, um, honest and so from your heart and spirit. Thank you. You know, I believe that, um, that the other thing that, like I said, I've been going through a hard time is because what I realized was that, um, as a hormonal imbalance, you know, so this is something that they kept talking about as well too. So this masculine and feminine, this hormonal imbalance, when I was tested, I was found out I was hundred percent testosterone. And so I'm missing my, my estrogen and I can't do in import estrogen inside, you know, with artificial or something because it's artificial and I don't, I'm not going with all this conventional artificial stuff. But what was happening was that not having this balance was creating more chaos within myself, you know? So, but a lot of people kind of thought that I was kind of a cold person because I was seen emotionless. You know, I wasn't the kind of person who cried or showed emotion or showed a lot of love or whatever. It's just like, I'm just Spock, you know, or my friends call me the general. It's like, there's the general, you know, just like, you know, do this, do that, get this done and do whatever. And I'm like, I'm just used to it. That's just kind of me and not having this whole feminine thing. But I'm like, but I feel so strongly connected to the feminine. You know, I feel so strongly connected to the mother, but I'm like, how am I connected to her when it's obviously physically, I'm not connected because of this imbalance of hormones. But with this imbalance of hormones has caused this flood waves of, of emotions. And when they talk about, you know, menopause going through these emotions, and this is why I wanna share with people because other people are going through this and if other people don't realize that they're going through it and somebody else is going through it, then how are we gonna learn and share from each other? But these emotions cause the, I could feel the anger and the resentment. I'm like, if this is what guys feel, you know, if they don't have the hormonal, the femi feminine divine balance in them, if this is what it feels like, this anger, uh, resentment and depression, no wonder so many people are so having a difficult time just trying to cope with life. And you see all these people who just started like, you know, checking out and giving up and things like that. And it's like, why is that? I never could understand these things before because I wasn't feeling those things before. I was always very secure in myself. But once they put that into my head, all of a sudden I didn't have any security, a belief in my own self, you know, because I've let other people kind of control those things. And those things have caused a whole floodgate of emotions with inside my own self and my own mortality and like, am I really needed to be here or am I needed to be elsewhere? Or, you know, what's the deal? Because they make it seem like, you know, because you're good, you can live and or because you're good or because you're good, you get to go or what, you know, it's like, wait a minute, you know, none of these things are making any sense, but we're feeling these and then people aren't listening to each other and everybody gets more and more disconnected. So back again, I'm trying to find a way like, if this is helping me, it's helping me to feel better. It's helping me to feel better mentally. It's helping me to feel better physically. So it's definitely going to help me spiritually and, you know, everything else that's moving forward into 2023, you know, so. Thank you. Was you know, I, I want to give Ava a chance to uh, speak. Uh, Ava Park is with us and she's the uh, founder of the Museum of Woman. Um, and Ava, thank you, first of all, for being with us. And I just have to give you an opportunity to share anything you want to share to Antoinette or about what you've heard today. 
Well, I just want to say what they said. <laughs> that was so fantastic. Everything that everyone spoke. Th this group, it's so marvelous for me to be with you beautiful, beautiful people at, uh, on, on New Year's Day. Uh, there's an old Celtic um, tradition, a teaching that says the um, focus, the energy, the quality of energy that you have on the on New Year's Eve and, and the first day of the new year is going to inform your entire year. So this is the most perfect thing for, for me and all of us to be doing, to be with people who see that there's just oneness. And I love what Pato said. That that was so brilliant. Thank you. I love what John said about um, the authenticity grants authority. I've never never heard it phrased quite like that. That's just that just will stick in my mind. That's just brilliant. I see so much conflict on social media. Um, men and women fighting, uh, hating each other. Men are the problem, you know. Women are stupid, you know. All, all this, and then so much war in the world and conflict in the world. And I believe one of one of the great things that we can do is you know, to remember that we are one body, but some parts of the body need healing. So if you had, you know, if you had like an injury on your finger and it wasn't behaving right, then you wouldn't, you wouldn't hate your finger. You wouldn't cut your finger off. You wouldn't, well, I guess, suppose if you had gangrene, but you know, you would heal your finger. And so that's what I think we should think of ourselves as one body for we certainly are. And if there is something going on, war, conflict, unnecessary death, murder, rape, whatever it is, not to not to hate it. It's something that needs to be healed. And women particularly can hold boundaries with compassion. You can say no and not make the other an enemy. The women of Iran, they're saying no. And many of them I've been in communication with, they, they are not hating what other people are calling the enemy. They are just saying, no, this is not what we're doing here. We are going to bring more beauty, more goodness, more justice to the world, and we are not going to make anyone an enemy. And that's what I think is a great focus for, for 2023. Don't make anybody an enemy. Just see what needs to be healed. See what boundaries need to be held. Because a lot of people hold boundaries, but they don't hold them in, they hold them in a, a negative way. A, a boundary is not a fence that you put around yourself to hold things out. That's not really what a boundary is. A boundary is your statement about what we are doing here right now. It's your realm. It's your, this is what we're doing here. We are in oneness here. We are in love here. We are in compassion here. This is what we're doing here. Not anything else, just that. And that's a boundary. You're not holding anything out. You're not putting a fence up. You're just saying, this is what we're doing here. Do you want to be with this? Does this look good to you? then please come here. Blessed be. Oh, that's beautifully stated. You know, boundaries are what we need to know the game that we're playing, right? Um, and uh, a big part of the teaching of Love Coach Academy is how to set boundaries with compassion, right? Um, and for some of us, it's hard to set boundaries because we want to be seen as compassionate, right? So finding that balance of how to set the boundary, how to establish the playing field um, is really beautiful. And Ava, it's always amazing. I just put your um, bio into the chat box and so many different ways that you've been honored and celebrated. And again, she is the founder of Museum of Woman. Um, and so I encourage everybody to go take a look at what she's doing. Um, it's so important. She's got some beautiful videos there. And um, uh, I'll just read it. Inspiring women to greatness now by understanding the histories of goddesses, queens, and wise women through the ages. Uh, and 
Um, it's really important for us as this rise of divine feminine is taking place. And I don't know if you know him, but I'm going to bring uh, Chief Phil back online. I, hopefully he's still here because Phil is very much about um, honoring uh, women. And I know he was here a moment ago. There he is. Phil, if you can hear me, uh, oh, his video is there, but he's not in, in the chair. So, because um, I wanted to bring Phil on uh, to meet you. But since um, you brought up Phil, you know, he, he is such an amazing, you are right. Uh, always um, when we did our past Unity Earth events, all the feminine divine ceremonies, he's always, he's always been like the number one. He's probably one of the biggest feminists besides Pato. You know, yeah. them two are, are like the big feminists. They, they support feminine divine power. And um, he also was the first one to come and bless the land for us over an Edentia. So oh. when after for the after the hollow movement, you know, with the evolutionary leaders after unity earth at the L.A. convergence, you know, we're going to uh, take people out back to the land again on Edentia. That's what we're hiking today. But he gave a beautiful blessing for that. Hey, there he is. Phil, we were just talking about you. I don't know if you overheard. Um, uh, we wanted to bring you on. So you are on camera right now with Antoinette. Um, and uh, we were just talking about the rise of the divine feminine. Ava Park um, did a, is a very powerful leader in our community. And you should connect. She's in Southern California. Um, so just wanted to bring you on for a moment, Phil to get your wisdom about the rise of the divine feminine in this new year? Well, first of all, I want to say that I, I so appreciate the Urantia book. And I want to say that, you know, when something such as goes beyond the world of names and syllables and sounds, our beloved creator, the, that, the meanings are infinite, infinite. And to, to in any way, uh, how do I say it? Close our minds off from the revelations that are always progressively coming to humanity to uplift us is not being able to take in the full riches of this divine power that animates all life. And so I really want to, 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 first of all, say that we need to open our minds and know that our creator is infinite, just like we are. That each of us, from our perspective, is born of sovereignty, ancient, and perishable, everlasting. But at the same time, as they share the Orensia book, around five or six, seven, eight years old, we make we begin to make conscious decisions. And these conscious decisions we make really then take us on that spiritual path. So I really am, am really pleased to, to, to hear this and share this. And I wanted to share this one, one uh, uh, dimension here that I think really, really puts this in perspective in terms of how we talk about God or we talk about our creator. Because it's so far beyond us to fully, fully grasp something that's created a universe so, so far. But yet we have these progressive revelations as was described by Pato that bring us these teachings. And it's a little short piece I wanna read <clears throat> from a book called The Gleanings. Lauded and glorified art thou, O my, O Lord, my God. How can I make mention of you? Assured as I am that no tongue However, deepest wisdom can be fittingly magnify thy name, nor can the bird of the human heart, however greatest longing, ever hope to ascend into the heaven of thy majesty and knowledge. If I describe thee, O my Lord, as him who is the all perceiving, I find myself compelled to admit they who are the highest embodiments of perception have been created by the virtue of thy behest. If I extol thee as the all wise, I am likewise am forced to recognize the wellsprings of wisdom have themselves been created, generated through the operation of thy will. And if I proclaim thee an imperable one, I am soon discover that they who are the inmost essence of oneness have been sent down by thee and are but the evidence of thy handiwork. And if I claim thee the knower of all things, 
I must confess that they who are the quintessence, quintessence of knowledge are but the creation of instruments of thy purpose. Exalted, immeasurably exalted, art thou above the strivings of metal, mortal man to unravel a mystery, to describe thy glory, or even hint at the nature of thine essence. At the same time, we're given these sacred teachings. And to me, the real measure of these teachings is, is the human being and the joy and happiness you see reflected from their divine soul. And when you see Pato and his beloved wife, Antoinette, again, happy birthday, they radiate the spirit because they're connected to the spirit. There's no way we can be happy at times of tests and difficulties, especially if facing cancer, unless you're connected to the Holy Spirit, to the spirit. And so to me, uh, I just, I want to learn everything I can. I want to find the light. I don't care what the lampshade looks like. I want to find that light wherever it comes from. And we know if we get hung up in, for instance, the sun rises a certain place in the horizon in the summertime. So I said, oh, that's where the sun rises. Well, it rises a different place in the winter or in the fall. But if I get hung up on that place where it rises, I, I miss it because <laughs> it's continuously being we were receiving these revelations. And that which is infinite has infinite meanings. And it's, 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 it's so I just wanted to share and reflect that about this beautiful book, the Arantia book, which I had the great honor of, of, uh, of uh, encountering here many years ago. And just to think that it wasn't until 1911 when this was first revealed and how it spread since that time and brought such joy and happiness to all those around us. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, especially Scott and your whole program for being so open in sharing these holy and sacred teachings from whatever horizon, from whatever lamp they might shine and yeah. not being hung up in the lampshade. <laughs> because <laughs> here we are, look at our earth suit. You know, our earth suit, my earth suit looked a lot different 50 years ago <laughs> than it does now. And I've I been to that. that sacred land. We prayed at that sacred land with a very special sacred pipe. And that land is going to be as we pray. It's going to be. The last thing I'd like to share very briefly here, because I think it's so important. We are angels. We are angels. We have that dimension. And the soul... The soul is independent of and the very source of our body's existence. It is our body. If our body is destroyed, our soul and spirit remain unharmed. Our soul, our human spirit is independent of our physical body. Our soul is free and sanctified beyond this physical plane of time and space. All the powers that distinguish us as human beings, reason, memory, abstract thought, creativeness, infinitiveness, willpower, are all properties of our soul, not our body. Here's what I love. A love that anyone may have had for anyone will not be forgotten in the spiritual worlds to come, nor will we forget the life we had in this physical world. I'm going to just share one more. because This is what's exactly happening here. In the spiritual world, we will recognize one another. We will seek union, a spiritual union. And I want to suggest to you, that we are living right now in the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. We are seeking these sacred relationships. That's why when we meet people, sometimes we feel this because we recognize that spiritual bonds, spiritual uh, connections. And just add this last couple of sentences. In our Dakota culture, we have our relatives. Because we always talk about my relatives. We have those that are blood relatives but we have equally respected and honored what we call hunka. Hunka are those relatives that are spiritual relatives. They're brought into our families. And many times we're closer to our spiritual relatives that are sometimes are much easier to deal with than sometimes our blood relatives. <laughs> you might know, I mean, we all go these tests of difficulty. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. What a most beautiful way to start the new year. 2023. It's going to be the greatest because we are, without question, know in all the sacred 
teachings of all the sacred revelations that have come upon Mother Earth, that there is this time coming when we are moving now into unifying our human family, finding that, and that's going to be through the spirit. It's like it's taught in the Orantia book. And of course, ending war. And I truly believe without question, we shall either before, but by 2030, end war and begin peace on earth. So I thank you so much. Thanks so much. And I just wish you, I'm so, so happy, sister, you're feeling better. Thank I had you, that man. sense, I had that sense when we prayed together. I had a little humble prayer. I knew that the creator, because again, I'm praying for you too. I'm watching you because you're all up and down the place. It's like one minute you got all this stuff happening with your body. Next minute you're on a plane somewhere else. Like nothing <laughs> will stop you at all. There's yeah. no physical ailment or anything that will stop the chief from going out there to do what he <laughs> needs to do. This is what's so very powerful. And I, I love this about you. And I, and what I love about what you said also says in the Rancher book is like, God is no respecter of persons. And this was something that I, why I told Scott, we're all so connected in all of this. I said, Scott, I want to meet this woman, Caroline Corey. And I told Quadjo about it because somebody had dropped a portion of her documentary in the Urantia, one of the Urantia groups. And when I watched this documentary, it's called God's Among Us. Mm. In the documentary, they were talking about the alien visitation and the aliens that were coming to take the people or you know whether they're healing them or doing things or, or different things, whatever. But the one common thing that she said that I love, and Chief Phil said it and the Urantia book says, is that it did, despite your race, color, cl class, or creed, social, economic status, none of those things played any role or matter in it at all. None of it, you know, that's what shows that. And it also said too, that we are gods because if we're trying to pray to the God within ourselves, which is God, the fragment within our mind, that also makes you an equally chosen special personal God connecting to God as well too. You know, so I said that was really fantastic about the Urantia book. It was very fantastic about how uh, Chief said, you know, the sun is going to shine over here. You're going to run over there. The, shi the sun is going to shine here, there. It doesn't matter where it's going to shine. He doesn't care who it is. It's still going to shine regardless. And that's the other thing about what Ava said too about how we're moving into things is that they're still our relatives. Everybody is still pissed off about one thing or another, and they're forgetting off. No matter what we're going through, they're still our relatives, and they're still people that we got to deal with, especially when it comes to justice. You know, because I hear a lot of people kind of pissed off about Avatar right now, but you know something? It's like <laughs> right now, that's, you know, he's the least of the fish I need to fry right now, <laughs> you know, so, and he's still a relative, you know, but we, we got to address things. You know, when it comes to our indigenous relatives and stuff, you know, every, we're all connected. So because we're all connected, it's how we're going to sit there mindfully connect and seek our justice in a mindful way. Because yes. I'm still seeking justice. I'm not letting things go. I'm going to let shit go because the spiritual thing is to let things go, you know, because I need to let go so I can move on. But we can also seek justice and let things go and move on with forgiveness as well, too. I think that's the way of the universe. That's the way of the world. <laughs> wow. Um, I, I want to come in with a few things. We do need to wrap up in 20 minutes because uh, then we've got the big concert with Kristen and Cornflower. So just a reminder, everybody, that if you haven't already gotten your ticket, make sure that you register for this amazing concert. And I'll talk about that at the end with our Global Peace Tribe announcements. But you know, while I've got Antoinette here and as I've got Phil, I'm gonna bring uh, Summer Joy back on. I'm gonna bring John back on. Um, uh, I'm gonna bring Quadro back on. Uh, I just wanna say that there's a lot happening. And one of the things that's emerging and evolving that I just wanna alert people to Many of us are going to be gathering in Sedona in late March for the Evolutionary uh, Leaders Network. And then after that, we're coming to Southern California 
on Tuesday, March 28th, there's going to be a big event in downtown LA um, that Ben Bowler is putting together. Um, on Wednesday, Pato and Antoinette are going to take people out to their land. Um, Sri and Kira, who we collaborated with yesterday, are coming up from Ecuador, first time in 12 years they've been in uh, the United States. Um, and so we're looking at putting together a global peace tribe retreat immediately after that, probably starting on Thursday, March 30th. So um, Tangila is gonna work on putting together a psychic fair in Southern California around that time. So we're all gonna need to get together, put our heads together and figure out how we can organize this so we can all come together in Southern California at the end of March. Um, so this is something that's all been evolving in the last few days as we're all kind of connecting with each other, but I wanna put that out to our Global Peace Tribe. Um, and- I just put the link there for the, for the LA Convergence inside the, the chat. So that's for the LA Convergence. So this is going to be exciting times. All right, well, I'll wisdom. pull it up. The wisdom. At the wisdom, I actually am who uh, introduced Ben to my buddy, Sean, who runs the wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so that's where it's going to be. So, but of course, a lot of our friends can't come out for one night, but they can come out for a week. Mm -hmm. So that's why we want to put together a week full of events. Um, and but Phil Lane actually was at, it, he was that's where Phil had invited us over to the wisdom. That's right. why we had picked it again. Yeah. <laughs> and Kristen yeah. Hoffman, who is our beloved, she sends you a happy birthday message, by the way, Antoinette. She's flying out and she's going to be with us um, on March 28th and beyond. So um, it's, it's going to be quite an amazing time. Uh, so we've got a lot going on. A lot of exciting things, and I agree with what a few people have said. She, Phil, Ava, how wonderful to start the new year coming together. Um, and Quajo, I so am grateful that you're with us all the way from Ghana, representing uh, uh, Africa and representing and helping us to remember that we really are a global peace tribe. So um, thank you, Quajo, for being with us. Thank you, you, know, you guys know that Quadro also has a, an excellent affirmations too, because he, you know, people don't know this guy is not only is he like a, our, our, he's our number one seed planter outreach guy of the Urantia book in Africa. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. nobody reads the Urantia book like Quadro Spirit reads the Urantia book. I don't care what anybody says. Nobody <laughs> reads the Urantia book like Quadro Spirit reads the Urantia book in Africa. It's him. This guy, his genius knowledge and his music is so spectacular that it's my ringtone. And I said, I need to learn more about these affirmations. He's got the wickedest ringtone. And every time I hear it and somebody calls me, I'm like, I am, you know, I am healthy, wealthy, abundant, prosperous, whatever. It's like, I'm going to write my own affirmation song because that's, a, I think we, everybody needs to do that is like, make your own affirmation song. But this guy is genius. Spirituality, music, science, spirituality, music. <laughs> I mean, it, it is, every time I just I just want to share some few truths from the Eurasia book that, that sort of like sum, sum, summarizes. I, I've called out about seven truths from the Eurasia book, which kind of summarizes the, the whole book. I mean, it's a very big book, but I mean, if you pay attention to, to, to these few truths that I've, I've, I've called out, I think it'll, it'll give you an idea of what the Eurasia book is. So one is, we are we are not alone. So the the Eurasia book says that our planet is a member of an enormous cosmos. You know that we belong to a, a world, an infinite family of worlds. But our sphere is just as precisely administered, just as lovingly fostered as if it was the only inhabited world in the whole cosmos. So we are part of a huge, you know, cosmic family out there. We are not alone. You know, they are, they are, I mean, you can see NASA has been bringing us some new pictures of the cosmos. And you can see how enormous the cosmos is. And so the Eurasia book gives a lot of information regarding the other beings who are out there in the cosmos. Number two is God is a personal being. It says God is a transcendent reality. It says he is a, a saving person and a loving father to all who enjoy spiritual peace on earth and who crave to experience personality survival in death. Number three, the afterlife is real. You know, there's been a lot of 
debate as to whether there's an afterlife or not. The Erasure book confirms that indeed there's an afterlife and it's a beautiful journey out there. After this life is when the real life, the real deal actually takes off. You know, there's 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 a whole as mortal ascension scheme or mortal ascension plan, you know, for all beings, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, once you die and you survive in death, there's a beautiful life out there. Death is the only beginning of an endless career of adventure an everlasting life of anticipation and eternal voyage of self-discovery. So it's self-discovery and cosmic discovery. Number three, it says faith. Faith is the only requirement of eternal life. And this has also been up for a, a, a lot of debates, but the Hiroshima book makes it very clear that faith is the only requirement for eternal life. Said Jesus, my father will ever re respond to the faintest flicker of faith. So if it he who can 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 accumulate or come up with faith as as small as a master seed, you know, will have some reaction from from God or will have God's hand move towards such a person. Number five says a fragment of God lives within each of us. A fragment of God, a chip of God lives within every being. So there lives within every human mind a divine spirit, the gift of the Father in heaven. This good spirit ever strives to lead us Godward to help us to find God and to know God. Number six says Jesus reveals God. So Jesus is a spiritual lens in human likeness, which makes visible to the material creature, him who is invisible. And the last one says, love is real and powerful. Jesus said, devote your life. And th this was a direct command to one of his apostles called John. He said, devote your life to proving that love is the greatest thing in the world. Love is the ancestor of all spiritual goodness, the essence of the true and the beautiful. So it is very clear that, you know, I mean, any doctrine that deviates from the truth that we are all brothers and sisters is not true. You know, I, I, I mean, I mean, if if there's any re religion on earth, you know, the, the way we can confirm that its doctrines are sound is when it preaches about the, the truth or the fact that we are all one, that we are all brothers and sisters, irrespective of color or race. Mm -hmm. So if we have any doctrine deviating from this fundamental truth, you know, we can immediately tell that this is not pro-life, it, it is entire life and, and, you know, it cannot be accepted into, you know, the, the confines or domains of mortal and cosmic existence, you know. And the Iran Shabuki, it's all about that. It's all about, you know, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of all men. It preaches that and that alone. Every other thing, you know, is a reflection about this central truth that, you know, we are all brothers and sisters and that we are all one, you know, spirit, spiritually. So we should look beyond our differences, you know, and, and try to unify ourselves and try, try to, to live in community, try to live in truth and beauty and goodness. So yes, this seven truths kind of summarizes what the Eurasian books, you know, like this about. I mean, it's a book I will challenge everyone to, to you know, like flip through because it, it wasn't written for a particular sect or a particular group of people. It was written for every, every you know, school of thought. You know, if you are Jew, you you definitely find some pages in there that will highlight. Or it is. Really, it's really universal. It is for universal. everyone. It universal. is for everyone. Yeah. And I, as your theater, I actually have pulled up, I just embedded into the computer, this amazing video that you did with Pato and Antoinette. So let's take a look. And as we watch this, we can integrate all the wisdom. So it's pretty. Well, that's I am Mother Spirit. I am your local universe mother spirit. I am the feminine divine, the universe spirit, the Shekinah, Shakti, the creative mother spirit, the divine minister, and the Holy Spirit. I am the giver of the breath of life. I am omnipresent in this universe and you actually live in me. I am a creative daughter of the infinite Mother Spirit. 
I am equal co-creator with your local universe creator son and we have created you in our image. I am the spirit of Mother Earth and Mother Nature. And the mystery of life, the vital energy spark, the essential factor of life plasm to the required revolutions of matter in accordance with the physical, chemical, and electrical specifications of your world. I am the cause of purposeful organic evolution reproduction. I am the source of all vegetable, animal, and human. I am the inherent endowment of mammalian mother love, maternal instincts, and the bestower of mind animal and human. I am personally maternal to all my children. I love you individually. I know you personally and I understand you completely. I am the provider of the spirit of intuition, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of courage, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of worship, and the spirit of wisdom. I am the Holy Spirit and I extend to you my fostering care and spiritual ministry as I work in harmony with the spirit of truth and your indwelling spirit to lead you ultimately to the loving embrace of our Heavenly Father. Ah, that is just such a beautiful work of art, Antoinette. Um, I really wanted to make sure that we showed that today. Um, and, uh, you know, there's so many other things that I want us to do. Um, but, you know, but she, I know. Yeah, time is running out. <laughs> yeah, time is running out. But just a reminder, everybody, that you can get her amazing music by going to Bandcamp, um, just as we always promote Omashar's music at Bandcamp. And if you go there, it's her last name, Roots Data, R O O T S D A W. T-A-H, Roots Data. I love that name. Dot 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 yeah, I'm, a, I'm an uptown Thank girl you. who knows her roots and her culture. So she's the Irie Roots Data Patois. So that was, it's a, it's a the name that I just chose. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, so I know that you had something planned that you wanted to do. And so do, do you still, I mean, can... I've got to swing over in 20 yeah, minutes. We have to get right. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and I know Omashar wanted to um, um, do a sing along thing. So I'm going to pass on this one. We can always come back. I'm going to let them meditate on the, on the piece that I created for the outro, you know, so that's, that's so when I'll introduce that piece. Okay. Going out and we'll let go ahead and let Omashar go ahead and um, close out with his piece and then my piece. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I brought you on. Hey, I'm sure what an amazing morning, right? So full and we are totally flowing with the spirit here. And I, I would say ditto to every single word that has been said today. Holy smoke, I am so enlivened and enlightened and enlivened. It's brilliant. Um, and I, I have a little song here and it's actually um, uh, was written. It came to me, you know, spirit just says sing this and I go, okay. 
and it's um, a repetitive song, and I'm going to um, a, a mantra song, and it's written by a woman called Kathy Zavada, who's a, a long-time uh, musical acquaintance of mine, and she's a unity minister for um, Unity at the Lake, somewhere near Lake Tahoe, I think. Anyway, this song is hers, uh, but it's so beautiful, and um, the um, uh, lyrics are going to come. Have you got them? Not yet. Where is it? Come on. There they are. So here we go. Let's just go go for this and see what happens, shall we? Four thirty two. Why have we come to earth? Do you remember? Why have we taken birth? Why have we come to love? song it opens my heart just to sing it wow. I, love it. I love it i was singing too <laughs> i heard you i heard the ringtone too <laughs> oh. 
I'm like, I'm in a Zoom right now. I'm like, uh, <laughs> we are alive and we are genuine and authentic. Here we are. Here that we are. was so beautiful. Thank you. All <laughs> right, Antoinette, I'm turning it over to you, my dear. All right. So the, the so what we was going to do before, so with Omashar, when he said he was going in 432, I just want to explain to everybody uh, about this 432. So th those who meditate in 432, they understand this already. This was something I didn't learn about until much later that I had heard about 440 is the, the key that we all kind of play in, you know, like that we all play in. So it's a, it's like, a frequency, 432 frequency hurts. Right, 432 frequency hertz. So apparently when you play in this hertz, this frequency, it opens up the pineal gland. This is supposed to be the the act, the, the frequency, the God frequency, you know? And I was like, is there really such thing as a God frequency? So you guys will have to tell me how you feel when you hear it, you know? So I always get a different feeling when I'm playing in 432 or creating. All my other music was always done in 440. So it's a new experimentation. So going into the new year and as I move forward, I'm going to be creating a lot of meditation pieces, a lot more music. So get at me, Ava and everybody else and stuff like that, because I'm just going to be constantly every week as I'm healing myself. I'm just going to keep trying to sit there and see what I can connect with, you know, with the different frequencies of 432. I believe love is 528 and different things and the healing ones. So I'm just going to continue studying. Let me know what kind of feelings or uh feelings that you get from it or what you're coming out of it because that's what i like about meditation pieces like what pato says it's like when you go within your own mind without something else telling you what you should be feeling or thinking but what is already inside your health self so imagine like if you're going to use your own words and what you're speaking to yourself or god is speaking to you or something like that so here and i call this one the voice of solania because Solania in the Urantia book was the voice in the Garden of Eden that was trying to keep Adam and Eve out of trouble. They said, no matter what, always follow God's will. You know, so that's why I'm calling this one. So Solania is kind of like my person that I'm thinking of, whatever. It's like, she's going to be, you know, created by the mother spirit. She's going to be the one that's going to keep me in line, keep me focused, stay on the track, know what, you know, I got to do, focus here, do this, do that, do whatever, and, and connect with spirit and connect with everything else. So you guys let me know what you guys feel and think from this. You can close your eyes or dance or whatever you want. That was a taste. <laughs> it was beautiful, Antoinette. It took me into my heart. Good. Wow. Um, what well, we are kind of coming to a close here, um, but I want to uh, remind everybody that uh, stand up for justice is a big part of Antoinette's world. And so, Antoinette, I'm, I'm going to bring up the uh, website. And I have it quite ready because I thought you were going to play a little bit longer. Um, but I would love for you to yeah, please talk, tell us about Stand Up for Justice and the Jane campaign. Okay. So, Stand Up for Justice, um, thank, thank you so much, Scott. Stand Up for Justice is, uh, is an organization that I had started a couple years ago. And, um, and it was actually right at the time when you actually first got me onto the show. 
That's right. You know, so, and I want to thank you so much for for actually doing that. And since then, we've been doing so much great works. Uh, you know, with the sign network, with bridging the divide, with having these conversations between black and white, and you know, Black Lives Matter, like what we're trying to do within the community. Uh, with the Jane campaign, which has also taken us into the Ubuntu project. So let me just put in here, stand up for justice. I, I already popped it in the chat box. Okay, so, awesome. Yeah. yeah, so Jane, so Jane was the one who was calling me. So Jane is coming out with our hike today. She is a mother, a single mother of an autistic child. And um, our biggest fears is like, you know, how the police response is to our community, um, you know, for black and special needs and autistic. In our community so she's part of the part why why i started the organization stand up for justice also because i felt like we weren't getting enough of equity and equality in this country as black americans and even though we were always talking about the oppressive side of everything else that's going around the world why is it that people don't really know much about us and some of the concerns that are happening within our own neighborhoods and so I felt like all the other organizations that were supposed to be doing these things weren't really speaking in the way that we want us to be able to speak for ourselves, which is in terms also about education, about diversity, about our own health and wellness, why we're not surviving, you know, in the medical field, all these different things, but also coming at it from a spiritual approach, because everything that Pots and I do always has to come from a spiritual place of love in all the work that we do. So I pulled up the track again. So maybe hopefully you guys can meditate on this and then, you know, take a look at the site and see some of the awesome work that we're doing. We're doing MLK Day. We're doing Juneteenth. We're also doing a whole thing about educating our youth about sustainability, about greening the environment. That's the reason why we're actually, you know, building this eco village and spiritual retreat center in California. These are all the things that we've kind of like studied from the Urantia book as like, what is going to bring us towards light and life in the future? So the work that I'm doing is not that I feel like I have to accomplish it all now, but I think that every individual, if we all just take our little piece and plant our seeds, we could sit there and like bring ourselves closer to light and life, make this place a better planet for all of us to be able to enjoy, you know, and we could do that through justice, through love, through truth, beauty, and through goodness. And I'm feeling all these things through my prayer and meditation and playing and getting the vibes from there. So. Beautiful. And as you're playing, I'm going to pull up the website and scroll through it for people. Awesome. Yeah. And this is the next version of the piece because this is also for the Ubuntu Project, you know, because we feel like the Ubuntu Project and the movement is really going to change the world as well. How we all, I exist because we all exist, you know, I am because we are. That's the spirit of Ubuntu. to do.
<laughs> you know, I'm just going to interpret it as uh, showing that life is filled with mystery um, and there's a lot more. And uh, I know we're going to be doing um, a lot of things coming right up with MLK uh, weekend showing up. And um, actually, I need to talk to you because we're going to, Trish and I are doing a show on Wednesday, January 11th uh, to kind of highlight all the MLK activities. So I definitely want to make sure that we clue you into that. Um, I'm going to bring on one last time all of our wonderful people. Chief Phil, thank you for being with us. How wonderful to have you with us today. Um, thank you. Quajo, all the way from Ghana. How fantastic. Ava Park from the Museum of Woman. Thank you. Thank you. Ava, such a blessing. Of course, beloved brother Omashar, who I get to spend most of this weekend with. Um, so thank you. John and Summer had to take off, but and just want to uh, say hello to all of our friends. I'm going to go to Gallery View. Look at all of our friends, Jay Mayer and Eleanor Joy and Referee Jeff, Reverend Jeffrey and, oh my gosh, Lynn and Leaf and all of you. Mm -hmm. Greetings, greetings. Thank you so much. It's been a beautiful New Year's weekend, a wonderful way to start the new year with everybody. Um, and a big reminder that we've got coming up in less than an hour. Uh, in fact, I'm going to be going in and doing the sound check for it in a moment. It is Christian and Cornflower, their Rebirth 2023 concert. And I know that um, already uh, about 50 of you have registered for it. All the people yeah, who came in. Please yeah, meet me, everybody. Please meet yeah. me. Yeah, well, my website is ericanthonyhines.com. Okay. Um, there we go. Uh, we didn't need to hear that, Eric. Anyway, <laughs> so um, I also want to acknowledge those of you who came in at a higher level when you registered for Awakening World. You all got your free ticket. I sent it out last night. So um, I will see all of you uh, for this New Year's Day concert, hopefully. And there's still time to register. Just go to sonicsourceactivation.com, sonicsourceactivation.com. And also just finally a reminder to please support um, the Jane campaign and stand up for justice. I'm going to bring Antoinette on one last time. Um, there she is. Antoinette, happy birthday. Thank uh, you. Thank you. We're going out to where Chief Phil Lane blessed the land. I'm taking a group out there. We're hiking today. We're going to give thanks and glory to, to God and just, you know, make our New Year's resolutions. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Happy birthday, Antoinette. Happy Thank birthday. you, Vaughn. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Thank you all uh, for all the people who are studying in our Urantia group who was in there today as well watching. Thank you. Beautiful. Welcome. Have a beautiful one. We'll see some of you for the concert in 45 minutes. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.